this is Aaron Ashley Simon. This is Brandon Killaby H. Hall. It's Nazim. And welcome to another episode of Grassroots Podcast, where we talk about the past, the present, and the future. And we're going to just get right into it. Yo, that Quincy Jones interview. No, not even interview. Interviews. Uh, it's crazy. Multiple interviews. Multiple. I, loved, I love it. He's a <laughs> legend. Yeah. Can't he's, wait to get old. He's, honestly he's, at that, he's honestly at that old age, I don't give a fuck stage. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, you're, you're iconic, you're old. You're going to say whatever the fuck you want at this point. Okay. He, he's definitely at that point in his life where he could give two shits. Um, it's believable because he's moved around in so many different facets in music. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things, to your point, you could tell just by his responses in this interview, he don't give a fuck about what <laughs> nobody thinks. Like, no one. Zero. Yeah. yeah. And what's crazy, too, is that <laughs> for certain topics, he was just like, we can't talk about it. We can't talk about it. But uh, do you like do you like skiing? Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. It was <laughs> segue. <laughs> segue quick. Move it, right out. Move mad, right out. Mad awkward. <laughs> mad, like, where you could tell he knew some shit that he wasn't supposed to talk about and he caught himself. Talking about uh, he knew who killed Kennedy, then named the guy who killed uh, Kennedy, and then was like, I can't talk about this anymore. <laughs> like, wait, fuck. You don't, you don't just bring that type of shit up and just dead the conversation. I hate that, though. Yeah. I hate it when people like give you a little bit of the sign. And they're like, yeah, I, was mad. yeah, yeah I, can't, I, was I can't talk mad. about yeah, it. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I'm excited to break down a lot of what happened here today. Where do <laughs> there's so much to start with? Where do we want to start? Do we Michael wanna... Jackson. Okay. Um, so apparently, uh, per Quincy Jones, excuse me, uh, per Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson was the biggest thief. He stole a lot of his big hits. One of, uh, the big hits was from apparently from Donna Summers, Billie Jean, uh, obviously a big record for Michael's career. Uh, and that was uh, state of independence. Uh, from Donna Summers. Apparently, mm -hmm. there's some sort of correlation, and, and Michael stole this. Um, <laughs> just, he wasn't rocking it right. Yeah, he wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't rocking it right. He wasn't rocking it right. So, um, I want to get into that first part. How do we feel about this? Do we believe Quincy? Um, he also went on to talk about a lot about uh, how he liked Michael, but that Michael Jackson lied about um, him having a skin disorder and, and having all of these uh, things wrong with him, that he really just dealt with a lot of uh, verbal and physical abuse from his father. So that's what caused him to try to, I guess, change his appearance and try to become a new person. And he would often, uh, I guess, hike on him or, you know what I'm saying, crack jokes on him about the way he looked. And Mike would just kind of laugh it off. So I want to get into that a little bit too. But let's let's back up a little bit. How do we feel? Do we think that the ever so talented Michael Jackson stole this record, or just multiple records from what he's saying? One hundred percent. Think so? It's possible. Like I mean, we, we've we've been in this industry. Anything is possible, really. And I yeah. feel like I feel like when when Quincy talked about that situation with Michael and his skin disorder, like that was a kind of already a conversation that was happening back then. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if like him discussing that brings some validity to the other um um claims that he has. Yeah. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. I mean you see you see times where labels would would take a song from one person and give it to another artist or they'll like fine tune another producer's beats and then and mm -hmm. then say like oh this is the beat for this song mm -hmm. i mean we see it so yeah. it's very possible well all right so that's one that's one aspect he hold also on, hold on man, real quick do you think donna summer would have rocked that like like michael no nah. next question you think so hell no i don't know hell no. i don't know i don't know <laughs> Um, no disrespect to Donna Summer, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, Donna Summers is amazingly talented, so I, I guess you don't know what twist an artist can put on a record until they've actually laid the record yeah. and, and put the record out. It's, it's, it's too many variables for me to be like, no, she wouldn't have killed it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's plenty of remakes of records that have come back out that um, you would never think could be done. Example would be Juicy. Juicy is an orig uh, original record. It's mm -hmm. maybe a little 
things that were done differently as far as um, arranging the record to make it sound like more of a hip hop record. But for the most part, that record wasn't really touched. It, it was organically put out and then Biggie went over it. It's a great record. You know what I'm saying? But Juicy, without Big on it, is is a smash record. So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, kind of like you said, like we, we can't. We can't really sit here and said would have, could have, should have. It yeah. didn't happen, so we can't really evaluate. Now, did he like knock that shit out of the park? Yes, he did. Yeah. But I don't know if we can necessarily say that you know Donna might not have done something successful with it. I don't know, but he definitely did very well with it. I mean, my thing is like, it kind of sucks though when you, when you look at an artist that you probably look up to, and it's just like they stole stuff. So if you think about it, like. Would his career have been successful if he did not allegedly steal music? That's that's well, a good, that's a question, you know. All right, so it's that's a tough question. The only yeah. reason why I say it's a tough question just because of the body of work that it's almost like the comparisons of Drake, right? Like Drake um, allegedly has ghost writers or or has had ghost writers or has stolen records or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Can we really discredit what he's done for music as an artist? I mean, not you know necessarily I mean? discredit, but like if they didn't do that, would he have would would his um catalog been as successful? That's just something that I'm curious about because it's like a lot if 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 I'm like basically like um evaluating what Quincy Jones is saying, it, seem, it seems like a good amount of the songs, of his hit songs, were allegedly stolen. You think Quincy, uh, Quincy Jones was high? Was what? Was what? high during yeah. the interview? No, he's, he's just No, old. isn't he sober? I thought, isn't he sober now? I, I'm just trying to factor in. I don't know. <laughs> he's just, he's <laughs> I'm just, really he's just old just and doesn't old. give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it is. All right, whatever. So I mean, he was probably um, sipping on something. Though. Yeah, I, something got it. Like, listen, that was some. <laughs> listen for the listeners out there. I don't know. He got twenty two girlfriends, so he on life high. Yeah, he's got twenty two girlfriends. Like oh, yeah, he don't. Yeah, he's he old. don't give a shit about what yeah. nobody it's like is saying. Like twenty something, like forty something. Yeah, something like I'm not wrong. Yeah, right, see, you see, right? I didn't know that. I didn't know he said that. I didn't read the full full thing. I'm not going front. Yeah, he he might be suffering from dementia. Twenty two. Girlfriends and they all know about each other. But think about it. I mean, like he. Um. All right. I, I don't want to fast forward yet because we're gonna get. <laughs> we're gonna get into that. We're gonna I, get, we'll into, get that. into those. So let's let's. <laughs> That's yeah, a lot of work though. Yeah. What, what? Eighty-five year old. <laughs> Mad blue pills. All right. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mad blue pills. Anywho. All right. So then, um, um, Quincy Jones. You know, obviously, just like everyone reading this, is naturally shocked by this information. So the person interviewing says. Well, how so? How was Mike, you know, yeah. uh, a thief? And uh, uh, Quincy says he's greedy. You know, he uh, even the uh, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough record, apparently uh, someone wrote uh, the C-section on that record and didn't give, uh, Mike didn't give him credit uh, for that record. Um, and then he goes on to just talk about pretty much how uh, that's partly the reason why music is where it is today and things of that nature. Um, I would... I don't know. I don't know what to think. I, I, I don't think it's too far fetched that Mike didn't steal records. Uh, devil's advocate time. Um, do you think it is completely fair for Quincy to um, allegedly claim that Michael Jackson is greedy when you can say the same about the label that is backing? him as an artist, mm. uh, especially considering, you know, you, we, we've seen so many situations and deals where like the label will um, try and take more from the artist or have deals that aren't the greatest deals. So like, do you think it's fair or do you think it's reasonable for him to address Michael Jackson without addressing maybe the situation with the label? Mm. All right, so yes, I think it's fair. The reason why I think it's fair is because I think, let's say, hypothetically speaking, uh, fucking Quincy is right. Mike stole these records. I think maybe Mike figured out, hey, I'm not getting my worth, <laughs> and I need to figure out how to put out some records or, or yeah. generate some income. So yeah. listen, if, if it's up there for the taking, I'm going to go get it. I don't have a problem. If, if that's what Mike, I'm a big Mike fan. I don't have a problem with what he did. He told the Beatles that he was going to buy that catalog. He told that to Paul McCartney's face. To him, to his face. Told, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think I think that's just the music business as a whole. 
<laughs> he did. I think that's a music business as a whole. I also just think, <laughs> though, fucking... Um, I only think the reason why people may be in shock and or not in shock is just because it's Mike. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, you hear these stories... Today, present day, you're still hearing about artists stealing records or producers uh, getting their records stolen and, and mixed over. And, and you know, it, it, yeah. it happens. It's the music business. I just think this is the first time, at least for me, where we've actually heard uh, multiple big records from from Mike have yeah. been stolen. I think it's also like you were saying. Or I that think, he stole, rather. Let me clear that up. Uh, uh, allegedly. 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 Yeah, allegedly. So, let me clear that, let me clear that, <laughs> that, clear that up. No, allegedly. Um, I also think that, I think people may be surprised. Is like, Well, there's two factors. I think people are surprised because, one, obviously when you're a fan, um, we as people tend to put our favorite artists or iconic artists up on like almost a godly pedestal and and don't think that they cannot have human tendencies just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. um, I also think it's a combination too of people who are not in the industry don't quite see these things happening. So like for you and I and, and even you and I was like we've seen this stuff we've heard of this stuff because we're in the industry so I think when it's like outside though it, it may come as a surprise to certain people but like it, it, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised if he did it, you know? I'm not saying, I'm not sitting here saying like that should discredit him being one of the greatest artists of all time. Like mm -hmm. I'm never, I'm not gonna sit here and say that because he is. But I'm not surprised if this is, this alleged claim is true, I would not be surprised. I hear you. Well, the next shocking events <laughs> per Quincy. <laughs> Wait, uh, which one though? Yeah. <laughs> So the next, um, he transitions into just uh, obviously Mike's uh, drug ad addiction with Profoval. And Quincy proceeds to say he knows about Profoval all too well. Uh, after visiting the White House and hanging with the Clintons, uh, he said for uh, White House for eight years with the Clintons and uh, learned how much influence big uh, stuff like that affected people. It's no joke. The way I read it <laughs> was that the Clintons was into uh, they was into some gangster shit, pretty much. That's how I read it. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna touch this. I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just the way I'm reading. Fans it. are watching. <laughs> but then again, in, in classic Quincy fashion. He disregards it and, 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 I'm sorry. and, and keeps it pushing. You like pineapples? Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know, but he said he has a lot of secrets. Oh, man, to be Quincy Jones. 85. Yo, those secrets he had, he was hanging out with, with President Clinton and Hillary. Yeah. He was, he was, he was, he was hanging out with some Thank of the powerful really people nice. back then. Gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. It's difficult to even speak on this as I'm stuttering, yeah. trying because it's like uh, these are some big statements. Like there's a yeah. lot going on here. Yeah, y'all can roast me all y'all want, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah. I don't know, um, but we'll, we'll move forward from there. Yeah, I got. Then touch that. Um, again, we, we we talked about uh, the uh, Kennedy assassination, who allegedly Quincy uh, knows who did it. Um, he goes into the connection. He says the connection was there between Sinatra and the mafia and Kennedy. Uh, Joe Kennedy, he was a bad uh, something, motherfucker, I'm guessing, and um, came to Frank to have him talk to, I'm not going to name the guy's name, about <laughs> getting votes. Um, again, I'm going to do what the interviewer did and, and what Quincy did, and we're going to bypass this because <laughs> Quincy uh, start talking about what's up with the Yankees and shit. So, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. listen, it's a lot going on in this my, my question is, do you think that he may fear his safety or it, do you feel like he may be protected if he's revealing this information? Because this stuff is some like deep government, some of the stuff he says is some deep government stuff. So I'm wondering, like, would... Like, how would you feel? Like, like, would if you be concerned I, about your safety? At I this think I know. I think I think he, in the midst of him speaking, I think he got a glimpse of like, oh, all right, I'm I'm saying too much. Let me shut the fuck up. 
it, it's it's like old beef where he he's rehashing. You're talking about the one of the Kennedys being assassinated, and then he that's American royalty. Yeah, and yeah. then you sit there and say, uh, "I know who did it," and then you drop the name in the interview, and then catch yourself like, "All right, maybe I'm maybe I'm getting too much into uh, some gangster shit. Let me just chill. Let me just you know what I'm saying like." Yeah. It's a lot going on. I don't. But I don't. I don't know. I, don't I, know. know. I, I think that even with the people that he's naming, they could easily just brush him off as being some old crazy dude. But here's the thing: uh, under normal circumstances, that would fly. Right. That would fly. Like, it's certain people. I'm. I'm inclined to believe. No, I don't, I'm not saying I don't believe. Him. No, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, just, yeah. But Quincy Jones. Right. Morgan Freeman. You think Morgan Freeman got secrets? Yeah, hundred percent. Jack Nicholson. Yeah, he has there's, secrets. There's some people that got secrets. There are yeah. some people out there that I'm certain can throw you right under the bus, no <laughs> <Yeah>. problem. <laughs> just because they've been around, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's certain people that you just know, know shit. Yeah, yeah. Jack got. So yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Morgan Freeman is the fucking what? I like, mean, he played God. Yeah, he's God. <laughs> <laughs> God. He played God in the well, movie. He's not, well, he's like he probably got the key to like. Yeah, he got the elixir of life, man. You see how he's still alive? Yeah, who you? knows? Who knows? I want, who, life. Yeah, who, how old is <laughs> How old is he? I don't man? know, but even, I mean, he's been looking old since driving Miss Daisy. Well, like, he, he's, <laughs> he got famous when he was like 32. I've never seen him young. Even in glory, he still looked old. <laughs> yeah, I was like, even like driving Miss Daisy, he looked yeah, old too. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. He was All right, a, but he's a, a G. Healthy 40. He yeah, <laughs> so I want to fast forward to the to the the juicy stuff. Pause. Oh God, the seventies. Yeah. So um, wait, sixties and seventies and eighties and sex of, and drugs and craziness. No, but do we, <laughs> do we think that that played a part in a lot of the shenanigans at that time? The nose candy. <laughs> <laughs> One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where are we gonna start at? Marlon I mean, Brando? Yeah, let's just go into the Marlon Brando part. We might as well. Cause Mar- that was that was the part where I was like, screw, screw. Oh. All right. Well, <laughs> I want I want to I want to quote this right. Slapping booty holes. <laughs> Bad business, man. Yeah, um. but honestly, like I spoke I spoke with my grandparents about it. Like they were just like, that's everyone did it. Like back then, it was like with drugs and like. Op- uh, not like public openness, but like just the whole fluidity of sexuality and stuff like that. That that sexual was sexual revolution. Man. Yeah. yeah. So All right. you know. So let's give some direction. So <laughs> fast <laughs> fast forwarding fast forwarding because I found the part I was looking for. So fast forwarding, uh, Quincy Jones talks about the state of music and uh, he liked he named a, a few artists that he he liked what they were doing. And pretty much how they represented them, uh, represented themselves throughout the years, and, and what they were doing for music. So he mentioned Bruno Mars, Chance the Rapper, Kendrick Lamar, even the Ed Sharon. He said is great. Um, he's so open about being gay. I love it. Per Quincy Jones, that segues into <laughs> um, him talking about you know I guess sexuality and just. Yeah. Uh, Fast forwarding right into Marlon Brando. He says um, that uh, Marlon Brando used to go cha-cha dancing with us, meaning all of them as a crew, and would often, he was just a charming motherfucker. He said he was he was smashing everything in the room, and it was, it was just going down. It was going down. Marlon Brando walks in the room, drop your pants. It's happening. It's happening. Pause. But apparently, per Quincy Jones, <laughs> It wasn't just women. He named some very big characters. Um, num- number one is James Baldwin. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two is Richard Pryor. And then number three is Marvin Gaye. Well, he definitely played it safe because those people are dead. Yeah. So well, he well, played James it safe with that one. Baldwin was known homosexual. Well, isn't it uh, his brother? Not... Alex Baldwin. No, 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 no. James Baldwin is the, the author. author. The author. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, author. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, not okay. the. Yeah, yeah, this guy. This guy. Yeah. Very intellectual. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so I wouldn't. He was openly homosexual. Marvin Gaye had rumors. I, I, and I, Richard Pryor said he sucked dick before. 
Whoa, Jesus Christ. Wait, <laughs> where, what? Yo, Nas with the knowledge over here. So if you go back in the archives of YouTube, he's doing a stand-up, and I think in either New York City or L.A. in one of these downtown clubs. And he just goes into the joke like, yo, you ever been sucking dick? And he rattles off some punchline, and the whole crowd is just staring at him. He goes, oh, yeah, act like I never sucked dick before. Oh, man. I mean, you're talking about a man whose mother was a prostitute. Well, yeah, he, he had a very exposed uh, childhood. <laughs> I'm bringing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so Marlon Brando and Marlon used to hang out with, what was that, James Dean? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. James Dean was known bisexual in yeah, Hollywood, yeah, yeah. too. Honestly, I mean, like I said, back then, it, just the fluidity and just openness, like you said, sexual revolution, drugs, like... People were doing so many things. <laughs> Let me just say that. So I'm not surprised. And even if you name certain people that m may surprise us, you know, sometimes it's Hollywood, sometimes man. it's the drugs that just made them do that. I don't uh, know. Hollywood, you're getting your, your, your cheeks crushed in the back room somewhere for, for a part. So hey, that, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking a lot of these people, uh, and this is probably the, the obvious statement, but a lot of people at that time probably was just out there just selling their souls just to get ahead in life. And now Quincy Jones is out here just... Or were high out of their minds. Yeah, but you know, I don't. now that you say it like that, I don't see James Baldwin doing it. I think James Baldwin and Marlon Brando would just probably like intellectually kick the, hit it off. So something. am I the only person? Because I'm, I'm always late <laughs> like to shit. Like Match.com or some shit like <laughs> no, that? No, I'm just saying. I'm just because Baldwin wasn't in that arena of... Of Hollywood, of entertainment. Yeah. He was more, more intellectual. A, yeah, he's more intellectual. Yeah, I don't care about that. My my <laughs> thing is... <laughs> he's like... <laughs> my thing is Marlon Brando. What about him? What about him? The way that uh, Quincy paints, paints him is like he was the original Playboy. Bunny. Pause. Yeah, oh. Like, yeah, he was. was out here in these streets just fucking... I mean, wasn't um, like it didn't wasn't James Dean? Didn't they say he was like the same thing? Somewhere? Yo, J, 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 you could catch it too, man. That's <laughs> wild. No, I but can't. It was crazy. There was there were certain. Um, <laughs> oh my Let me gosh! Be clear. Pause. <laughs> there Pause. Were, but there were certain male like male actors and known people that they like it like news came out later on that they were messing with dudes. Like for example, the Tom Brady dad. That stuff came out when he died. The guy who plays, um, not Tom Brady, oh my God, the Brady Bunch. Yeah, I was like, wait. Oh my God, the Brady like, Bunch. Wait a minute, Tom uh, Brady's dad did what? I was, thinking, I was still thinking about our Eagles I, winning. I, I, was about, I was about to say. I was Aaron's, still thinking about our Eagles Aaron, winning. Aaron's still on her high horse yep. with the Eagles winning, still trying to put but, Tom Brady in the and, dumpster. Well, and the kiss too. That, that. Oh man, um, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> that's a whole other discussion. The Brady Bunch. The dad, he it ended up came up coming out later yeah. that he was a gay man. But I'm yeah, saying yeah. like back then, like in the industry, they knew who was you know oh yeah it's a secret poking society. and everything like that. Oh, but most trucks. fans don't know that. Wowzers, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm I want to hear more. I you know what I was disappointed about with this interview though. What I wanted to see the video of this if it is wait. Of what the interview? Yes. Oh, okay. I just had to clarify. Because in <laughs> my whoa, Paul, <laughs> Jesus Christ, no. What I'm saying is what? <laughs> just clarifying. Aaron, <laughs> listen. The reason why is because just judging from uh, Quincy's demeanor, I could just picture him sitting back in a chair, like carefree, like, oh, what you want? What you want to talk about? <laughs> Would you uh, you want to hear? Yeah, he's mad gay. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, or or just, oh, yeah, he was stealing records. Like, he's probably so cavalierly saying this shit. And, and I would just love to have seen his mannerisms and then the interviewer's reaction to all of this. Yo, this shit would have been hilarious if it was in, um, if Dave Chappelle show was still around. And remember, oh, Rick James is like, cocaine's one hell of a drug. Yeah. Like, yo. yo, that shit would have been hilarious. If his demeanor was that way. Um, that would have been really fun. Well, I can't, I can't find lie. it, but the the interviewer that interviewed Quincy uh, did an interview, and he spoke about how um, he couldn't tell whether or not Quincy Jones a lot in this interview says motherfucker a lot. Like he was like, yeah, that motherfucker this and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. He said he couldn't figure out if he was saying it like 
as in a uh, term of endearment or if it, if there was malice behind him using the word just because of the way he was delivering the message and or all of the other things. And then on top of it, the content of this interview, he said he was too distracted because he's like, he wasn't expecting that. Clearly, that guy's never seen Bernie Mac stand up. Well, yeah. The word, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just think, and, and this may be juvenile for me, but I just wouldn't, I thought, I, I, pictured Quincy being uh, presidential in a sense and on how he carries himself. Yeah. He's very loose with the tongue, pause, in this interview. So that's why I think maybe the interview was probably taken back. He, he, I always looked at him as kind of like a classy guy, very conservative, but, you know, just a creator. So I think maybe Quincy he was just thrown. I mean, but when you're, when, uh, when you're a journalist, you're, you should be prepared to some degree yeah. or you should be trying to pull quotes out like this but like you said i think he wasn't expecting I, I think he thought that he might have been able to pull out certain information like the golden like the michael jackson thing mm -hmm. but then with every question it went to a whole new level and then he basically yeah. went and said like marlon brando was fucking booties here and there that is like okay Everybody. Whoa, I was well, not <laughs> expecting that. And that's the thing. <laughs> and I think also uh, credit to Quincy Jones. I think that was done purposely. I think there were moments in the interview where he may have gotten a little uncomfortable talking about things and probably caught himself where he was like, oh, let me mm -hmm. get the fuck up out of this shit. <laughs> so... And, about the Yankees. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> would you, yo, you want to go to the store? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just throwing in random stuff and then piggybacking and giving you more shit to talk about or think about to where by the time you even get a chance to think about it, he says something else that's yeah. outlandish or crazy or what have you. Um, he went on and said something uh, about like T Pain or somebody. They, they were doing some tribute or some shit like that. And um, that they, he fucked it up or something like that. I, I don't, I don't want to scroll through this whole thing. It's, it's, a, it's a long read, but um, apparently, uh, uh, T Pain said that uh, it seems like Quincy Jones is just mad at the world at this point. I don't, if, I don't, I don't get that from the interview. But that's my thing. If, if, why would he be mad? Like he's someone that has accomplished everything. Yeah. He clearly don't give a shit about what anybody thinks doing these interviews because this is his, what, second interview kind of going on a rant a little bit. I don't know if that's valid. I, I don't know. I just well, like, dropping that honestly, in. Honestly, it could just be he's on that I'm old, I don't care. Yeah. Like, he, I mean, imagine, too, you are someone that's had to keep those secrets for decades upon decades upon decades. That shit's going to eat at you at some point. Yeah. And I feel like at some point you're going to be like, I need to get some of this shit out. Like, I'm too old for this. Well, now I want to know, if I'm, if I'm Vulture, because they did an interview, I want to know if, are y'all going to do a part two? <laughs> they like, might as well have a series with them. Or, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I feel like he he's someone that has so many, and not just from a, a gossip aspect, but he's someone that can give you insight to things that, happen historically within music or even within like civil rights uh movements things yeah. of that yeah. like i would like to just hear more from him on his views on things yeah if they're not doing it now i i hope that there are some historians that are talking to people like him before they pass to get as much information as possible so that you don't lose certain um parts of the culture mm -hmm. i think it's important to preserve especially preserving art I think it's important to speak with people who are like Quincy Jones, who are at the forefront of, you know, music or, or, or one of the big drivers and getting as much as you can. I mean, not obviously like this, some of this stuff, but like yeah. more things that are like just like the, the, the stories behind some of the greats and stuff like that. So here's here was the other thing. Um, <laughs> you keep laughing. <laughs> I see, I see, I know what's coming for us. Yeah, so the, <laughs> the next part, because we're not done. Oh, man. We're not done. They're still going. They bring up Bill Cosby. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. So bring up Bill Cosby, and um, the interviewer says, um, you know, wh how do you feel about Bill Cosby and things like that? Quincy says, that's a friend of mine. So he says, um, it was uh, all of them. 
uh, Brent Ratner, Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein, he's a job motherfucker. Uh, that, was, that was malice. That was that. that, that yeah, I think. Yeah, that, I think malice. that was malice. I think that was malice. Just to clear it up for those. Um, yeah. He said he wouldn't rec- uh, return uh, my five calls, and then called him a bully. And then he said, "Okay, the re- this is the interviewer." He said, uh, "What about Cosby?" So then Quincy Jones says, "What about it?" <laughs> interviewer then says, uh, "Were the allegations a surprise to you?" In classic. Quincy form fashion. We can't talk about this in public, man. It's interesting. It's interesting just for the fact that, again, he just blurts out things that are, I don't know. And then I think there's two major other things that happened in this interview that were still uh, ear and eye candy, I guess, Um, was the fact that uh, he's not religious. They asked him if he believed in, in God. He said no. Um, he, he pretty Sounds much, right. yeah, he pretty <laughs> much said that, um, you know, he feels like it, it's a, a whole bunch of bullshit. It's all fucked up. And then he made, uh, comments about Trump. They talked a little bit about politics and talked about that aspect. And he mentioned, um, dating Ivanka. Uh, he was out one night and, uh, I guess an associate came over and said, Hey, uh, she wants to go out on a, on a, a date. And he said, all right, we'll set it up. Like a G. <laughs> like a G. Put her in my calendar. Yeah, I'll pencil her in. <laughs> Next to my move, other 20 yeah, girlfriends. Let me move some stuff let around. Let move some, I'll, I'll figure it out. You know what I mean? I'll get to you when I get to you. <laughs> but, um, yo, I, I don't know. Bottom line, uh, this is now, legendary. Ivanka's the daughter, right? Y- yeah. Trump, yeah. You have Trump. Well, yeah. he has other kids too, so. Yeah, yeah. they don't matter. But no. <laughs> oh my <laughs> okay. gosh! <laughs> but, Am I lying? Yo, do you think he allowed her to order the most expensive meal on the menu, or do you think he was like, "Yo, girl, you need to chill"? Like, you know? yeah, the way he <laughs> saw. What, what year was this? I don't know. I don't know. He, uh, it, it, it has to have been like the. 2000s or maybe partially yeah it's 90s. gotta be number one because he said he was uh he's super cool with uh trump and they had a relationship and you know he, he knew them or whatever he would be super cool with, with that dude wouldn't he yeah well i, I <laughs> listen I'm, so what do we what do we uh rate his pimp game at this point 22 girlfriends allegedly allegedly um <laughs> you maneuvering and, and doing a lot what do we rate him yo I don't know, man, because yeah, 22 girls, and then you say you, you smashed Ivanka. Uh, it's like, I don't uh, know. You kind of Dr. Seuss in it, man. Yeah. It's, it's Quincy Jones. He made Q's juke no, joint. man. He probably got assistants handling each thing. One assistant's talking <laughs> got, to one girl, assistants another assistant's cheap. talking to another girl. <laughs> Word. No, like the assistants, the assistants are like doing the talk. He just Listen. comes in, he just comes in and does the deed. But he got the assistants that are texting, like, hey, babe, how you doing? So he's. Follow me though. If he if he could get a band and an orchestra to to bop to his beat, he could do whatever. I don't know. Then what? He's seventy, crushing somebody that's what at the time what Avanga had to be in her mid twenties. The blue pill. Yo, man. when you got money like that, you yeah. can keep that shit up. I mean, freaking the, the worst. He could buy three life. dicks if he needs them. <laughs> like, it's Matter of fact, he could just lay there. Yeah, he don't got to do shit. It's Quincy Jones, he could just lay there. Yo, if Ivanka did that, that's terrible. That's a terrible choice on her I'm part. Quincy Jones, bitch. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, he ain't got to do shit. Now, who are these 22 girls that he's dating now? Oh, he's probably, he probably uh, producing music as it has to He's happening. going to bed at 8.30. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> After watching Family Feud. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> Chilling. So are we are we chalking this up to an urban legend? He's eating <laughs> dinner 20th. at six o'clock. <laughs> Stop. I don't know. It but like listen, hate, but he got that gore, but he got that gourmet chef though. Yeah, word. Listen, Nas hate. Nas hate. Nas wait, hate. wait, Nas, you act like you don't go to sleep then either. <laughs> yeah, word. <laughs> Hold on. The work purposes don't work. Yeah, fuck out of here. I'm paying what? Nine nine. <laughs> All right, what else are we talking about? Oh, um, let's get into uh, NBA trades. NBA trades. Oh my gosh. I don't. What you what you call LeBron? <laughs> NBA vulture? Oh no, he's oh. definitely an NBA vulture. He's he's the NBA uh, vulture. <laughs> Yo man, that dude Yo, he is. traded his homie. No, did you see that? They said that he the only trade that he was uh, 
that they talked to him about was Dwayne Wade. The other yeah. ones, he didn't have anything. Lies. Uh, uh, Lies. Allegedly. 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 I don't know how true that is. I don't know. I thought it was interesting, too. I saw uh, Wade's uh, first return back to Miami uh, last night. My, by the way, the, those uh, Miami jerseys were fire. Did y'all see them? Mm-hmm. Ooh-wee. Was it like the oh, Miami oh. Vice style? Yes. Yeah. That was fire. fire. I thought it was interesting, though, that... Uh, Dwayne Wade's wife, Gabrielle Union, did a lot of uh, Instagramming well, last she, night. She was out of Cleveland. A lot Listen, of, you in the she, warmth. You're in Miami, baby. Yeah, but even <laughs> outside of that, she posted a picture of her uh, picture of all of them together saying it's still family. It's a picture with, uh, obviously, Dwayne Wade, LeBron. I don't know how Drake gets in there, but he's in there. And then her. <laughs> And says that we're still family, or it's still family. Something to the fact of they're still cool. The banana boat crew. Yeah, so (laughs) I thought it was interesting that um, all of these rumors were happening of how... um, you know, LeBron is really the owner of the of, of the Cavs. And then she goes on uh, kind of like a stance to protect her man and say, no, we're all still cool and, and things like that. Yeah. Do we believe this? Do we believe this? I, I think, me personally, I think LeBron got all of them the fuck out of there. That's what I think. I don't think, I don't, uh, Wayne, uh, Dwayne Wade, that's his boy. So I don't think, I think Dwayne Wade was just like, I think he was that guy who's just kind of like sitting in the corner and just seeing everything implode, employed, implode, sorry, implode. Yeah. implode. So I think he was kind of that guy who just saw everything, which is like, this shit is fucking nuts. So you think he left on his own will? No. Mm. Bron Bron <laughs> is Tupac in Juice. I am crazy. But you know what else? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh my god that's who lebron is <laughs> wayne dwayne is uh raheem man damn <laughs> and still who's still is isaiah thomas still oh <laughs> uh, wait did you guys see uh isaiah thomas is um when he was saying like how he wants to stay and stuff like that did you guys see that i don't i'm not rolling with that i'm not rolling with that only reason is because i know that he he was he was kind of voicing his opinion on the whole team structure, and he was talking out of pocket. Yeah, That's what they wouldn't. Oh yeah, Kev, yo, Kevin Love. Yeah, oh my god, yeah. right. <laughs> I think I think that I wasn't shocked about that happening. I was more shocked that the Lakers picked him up, and now I'm sick about that trade. I won't get into that horse shit, but um, I wasn't surprised at that. I was surprised at D Wade though. I was surprised at that happening. Um, I mean, he I don't, seemed, he, he seemed seems like cool. a, yeah, he seemed like his normal self. But Dwayne Wade um, is very uh, chill. Yeah, he got three rings, right? I believe so. He's got rings. He's got some. Yeah, rings. he got a ring with Shaq. Yeah, and two yeah. and two with Braun, right? and two with Braun, yeah. I believe. So he's got yeah. rings. He's, yeah, he's chilling. Straight. I don't. I don't know if I don't know if a, a trade was just. It, 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 I don't think that shakes him up. Maybe it was just like out of respect, like to bring him back home. You know, mm-hmm. bring him back to Miami Heat. So I. I mean, I wouldn't get upset because then if he wants to retire, like that would be like a big thing yeah. over there. That's, that's gonna so it's going to be huge for him. Yeah, so I don't think that's. I, and then it's like, then you retire and you're in Miami mm-hmm. and it's warm. Yeah. Son, that's like the perfect and place you to. Get you in your booty? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Whoa. My God. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Christ. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. Oh, man. You didn't hear that. Oh, man. <laughs> Hold on, you trying to tell me you didn't hear that interview? I heard the interview. I just wasn't going to touch it. Yeah, I'm trying to go in a positive direction (laughs) here. I'm trying to go in a positive direction here. I wasn't going to touch it. I'm not getting into anything that they do, (laughs) even though that... that, She she said it. I ain't going to lie. That interview was wild. That interview was wild. I wonder how that conversation went after. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, so, hey, babe, how was your day? It was fine. What did you do? To- oh, nothing. Talked about eating your booty. What did you do today? <laughs> like, there, there was a lot going on in <laughs> that He called them flames <laughs> in the locker room. Fam. Yeah, what is that conversation like when you walk into the locker room after your wife said some shit like that? Like, what do you, like, how do you get roasted? But it, I mean, it's also kind of, it's kind of hard too because of someone like at his level, like, if you had a rookie that tried to roast him, like, you can't, you're like, no, that's, that's not allowed. But he probably knows some shit that other people are doing too. Listen, let me tell you something. Dwayne Wade walked in there and said, listen, <laughs> any of y'all say anything? <laughs> I'm shooting these. I'm <laughs> shooting the face. He's not. You yeah. gotta point somebody in the face. You got to. You have to. There's no way to resolve it. You're not gonna crack a joke. Nothing. Somebody say something about something is going down the locker room. It got Even to. Even Bron Bron. Yeah. Bron Bron could get it too. I think Bron Bron. I think Bron Bron stood up for him. 
I think Braun Bon was said, nah, we're not allowing that shit here. Maybe they yeah. joked on the side, but oh, in the yeah, locker room, he was yeah. like, nah, you mess with him, you would you messing with me. You're gonna never. get traded. Yeah, never. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody say something about D Wade, you out of here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's crazy, crazy times. But um Hmm. So with with LeBron uh allegedly making some of these trade moves and things like that, do do we discredit him? No. At it's all? Discredit do we? In like what degree? Like we well, just... in the sense of him just having total control over the organization allegedly and, and, and making these moves. Does that? How do we feel about that? I guess. Like, d- does he have too much power at this point where he can just shake up uh, teams? Like, look at all these trades that happen. You know, you got Joe Johnson. Uh, you Get have well for the Lakers in their trade. It's Isaiah Thomas, Channing Frye, and first round picks. And and then like, d- does he have too much power? Mm. Um, Where did Shum go? Shum ended up in Utah, right? Ter- I don't know. Terrible. Um, yeah, yeah. He, no, he. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Kings. He's on the Kings now. Oh, he's on the is, Kings. Yeah, that sucks. Sacramento. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I, this is California, though. I, yeah. Well, I mean, Northern. Yeah, Northern, but. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, I, don't, I don't. So my thing is, does he have too much power at this point? I mean, better question: Is he worth giving that much power? Not at this stage. Why not? I'm just tired. Of, I'm just tired of the super teams. Like, and and I'm not even saying him necessarily because, like, even the the Knicks tried to do a super team, quote yeah. unquote. So, yeah. like, when, for when, me, when. I, when? Because now I'm a Knicks fan. Win. Oh, man. No, it was when they brought Derrick Rose and a few others. That's No, that's people were saying it was, quote, unquote, like a super, a super team. team. Uh, D. Rose is, is Not, dope. Uh, listen, his, I'm his saying. His were left back in Chicago. <laughs> Disrespect. No, he's dope. No, but like, you, but you, I, but I, you I cannot can't. cannot do one on one. Listen, <laughs> you, cannot, you can't sit here and say that that wasn't what, that what was tried to, like, that's not like what they were trying to do. Like they you definitely, can't, they, they definitely, definitely tried to yeah, do like a super team. You, yeah, they, they definitely know. did. Not saying that they were successful or about it, but I just like for me, like I miss, I miss when players wanted to stay with with one team and build with one team, yeah. and they hated definitely. each other, hated each other, and they didn't want to, you know, be with their homeboy on this team. This like they're like, nah, like I'm about to come and fuck y'all like up. AAU like generation. Yeah, that's what er- it is. everybody's different. Participation now. award. Oh, I hate those. Everybody's buddies. What is, like what? They who all who hang thought out about and... doing that? Part, I'm sorry. Participation awards are stupid. If my kid gets it, I'm throwing it out. That just means like you're okay with being mediocre. I'm not okay with that. I agree. So I hate it. I, I like I'm okay I with you having second place. That's fine. But me, but participation award. That means, dog, you were standing at the hot dog stand. <laughs> we're going to just, for your contributions of just standing there yeah, watching, like, we're going to give you. That's like, nah. uh, thanks for showing up. Everybody's a winner. Everybody's <laughs> so a winner. Thanks for putting the clothes on. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's a winner. winner. Everybody gets ice cream. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, I'm not rolling. I'm we're not, not rolling. not rolling with that at all. I'm sorry. The Knicks did Jack Diddley shit on the trade deadline. Which was surprising, though. What are we going to, who wants to come to New York with uh, Dolan? I get it. I, I just thought that <laughs> they would have made some moves. I didn't think that the Lakers would have done this dumb shit. Um, oh yeah, that was two young dudes. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know. Um, I guess more to come, man. More to come. Um, I guess we're gearing up for All Star Weekend. Uh, I'll be out there. Aaron's gonna be on crutches in these streets on Hollywood Stunting Boulevard. Stunting on and everybody. Shit with fucking Stunting. sunset. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about designing diamond. my crutches too. I was about to say, I can see you, you with b- b- uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm diamond de- I'm dead ass probably going to design my crutches because I'm, oh I'm going God. to events. I got to look good. I got to have the crutches look good. got to have people be like, who's I'm, that? I'm a little jelly. That's I'm a trooper. I'm, I'm, I'm a little well, jelly. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get... I'll, listen, I'm going to make sure you're a part of the experience. She's about to give you a participation award. <laughs> I'm gonna send you videos. <laughs> I'll make sure I'll FaceTime you and I'll keep you in the loop of what I'm no, doing. But I'm, I'm gonna have some clips. I'm gonna try also I'm gonna try and get some interviews for grassroots too. Word. I'm gonna try and get some stuff for us yeah, too. So we need it. But that's all right, participation while you'll be here long. <laughs> she's gonna send you a picture. Yeah. Hey look, I'm now on. she's not gonna send it to me, she's just gonna <laughs> nah. post it and tag grassroots. Uh, no, I'm gonna Photoshop you in it. <laughs> Damn. 
Oh <laughs> uh, man, I wanted to talk about Photoshop too. Uh, with, with Puff and Photoshop. I saw some shit earlier that was pretty funny. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> savage. He is a savage. Yo, he literally photoshopped uh French Montana completely <laughs> out of that photo, not even cropped. But it was interesting. Because the caption, it was like black excellence, you know, his normal yeah. spiel and talked about these are his friends. Why would he crop French Montana out? Because I don't know. Maybe you can say he's not black because he's from Africa. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> I, I, would, I, was, I was, it was a little yeah. intriguing. Whoever does his photoshops, they're nasty. nasty. They're so good. They're so good. Fire. Even the books on the, the back were even show. like, what? <laughs> Fam, shout out to you, <laughs> mystery <laughs> Photoshopper. Shout out to you. That shit. Yo, was and that dope. turnaround time too. Yeah, like I, I want to know what it, it got to be an app or something. Fam, he's taking a picture out and then like it's nah. magically. Well, Puff is different too, though. He got that like, on call Photoshop. Yeah, like, Leo, yeah. Clean Puff this is up. different. I've heard stories about him. I'll tell them on like another episode. I've heard some shit about Puff that like he's like a wizard or some shit and <laughs> just like. It's it, it, some crazy shit, but um, savage with somebody like him, I'm sure he has the resources to just mm-hmm. fucking send and a text probably, message with a he picture. He has a ton and then, of secrets too. Can't wait for him to get older. And, yeah, and start saying I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, I mean, he partially well, he partially don't give. Uh, he well, no, he does not give a fuck about certain things now. But yeah, yeah. But I wonder what he. You think he would? You do you think he would really? No, do? I, don't I don't think, think he would. On him. Yeah, I don't think he would. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think, think he's gonna. I don't think he would. I don't know. All right. Uh, that's our episode. Um, Want to thank you guys for listening. As always, um, subscribe, Grassroots Podcast. Uh, that's on Instagram, Grassroots Pod on Twitter, Grassroots uh, Podcast on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe. Let yeah. us know what you think. Also, join our group chat. The link's in the description. So look at that. Also, feel free to subscribe, like he said, and look at some of our other interviews and conversations that we have. Feel free to leave a comment. Tell us what you think about anything that we talked about. Let us know your thoughts um, because we're very open to hearing what you guys have to say. (laughs) All right. uh, I'm Brandon Killer Beach Hall. I'm Aaron Ashley Simon. And I'm Nazim. And we out.